We thank you for another beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for the plug this morning. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That, Lord God, you are always on time. It may not seem that way to us, but Lord God, we can trust in you, mighty God. You have the track record to back, Lord God, that you are always showing up when we need you, right in the nick of time. And so, Father, as we are about to impart your word, mighty God, I pray this morning that, Lord God, you will prepare our hearts, Lord, you will remove distractions, Lord God, that we will have a heart that is ready, Lord God, to receive your word this morning, that it will change mighty God and transform our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, I'll be reading from the book of John chapter 11. And this is a very popular story. Like, everybody knows this story. This was one of my favorite Sunday school stories. Right? And this is the story of Lazarus. Right, we know Lazarus, we know that yes, he died, and 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 you know, Jesus called him forth, right? But this morning, I want to just go into the word just a little bit to bring off, of, you know, what I believe that the Lord placed in my heart for us today. Praise God! And so, we're gonna read through, um, and you know, skip to certain verses and so on, all right? So, verse 11, chapter 11, starting from verse 1. Now there was, um, now a man was sick, and I'm reading from the HCSB version, just in case you're following and you're wondering what version I'm coming from. He said, "Now the word says, now a man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, and it was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent a message to him." Lord, the one you love is sick. So the word started out, this story started out by just telling us that a man was sick, right? At the beginning, it would seem like he was just any random man. But then the word went ahead and, you know, built that, established the relationship between this man and Jesus, right? This was the, 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 the man, the brother of Mary we know the story of Mary who broke her expensive oil and poured it on Jesus's feet right this was her brother that was sick hallelujah this brother was a friend of God he was a friend of Jesus a close valuable friend of Jesus I'm not sure if it was established earlier the the, the, the relationship between them but here it's showing that listen Jesus had a good relationship with this family. They're friends. They're valuable to him. Not just as people per se, but because of the relationship that they have with him. Praise God. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness will not end in death, but it's for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it hallelujah now jesus loved martha her sister and lazarus praise god <laughs> now jesus loved them the word of god tells us listen jesus loved them right and because they know that jesus loved them the sisters they sent this message to jesus now them sending this message to jesus they say i know that jesus loved me i know jesus loved my sister i know that jesus loved my brother so the fact that my brother is sick is reason for jesus to come quickly right so they they expected that when they sent this message to jesus that he would have run he would have left everything and he would come to their assistance right away because of of who they are to him praise God so they had two expectations right they, they they expected that hey this is what Jesus does this is what he's known for he's known for healing the sick right and also he's our friend we have a good relationship with him so it's our expectation that in our situation Jesus would come to our aid he would come to our rescue and so we're sending out the message to him to put that in a little context for us today we know our relationship with God we are his children we are 
are his sons we are his daughters we are valuable to him he is known to perform the miracles that we have been praying for that we have been seeking him for he is known to perform these miracles and so we are here and we're praying and we're saying listen god this is the situation at hand we are we're calling upon you because we're anticipating that you're gonna come right in and that you're gonna fix it you're gonna resolve it for us you're gonna give us the miracle that we need the miracle that we long for that's the mindset that they had when they sent to call jesus now in verse 5 it says now jesus loved martha and her sister and lazarus so when he heard that he was sick he stayed two more days in the place where he was when i'm reading that i'm like wait hold on back up hold on just a little bit now jesus loved them and i tell jesus hey jesus loves me i said jesus listen your friend my brother he's dying and the word of god said oh yeah jesus loved them and when he heard this he delayed think about it when some if you should get a news maybe it had happened it happened to you in the past right you get this tragic news oh my god somebody who is so valuable to you is hurt and in the hospital let me ask you a question do you pause do you stop do you wait do you delay any at all i don't think so unless you definitely cannot get away immediately when you hear that news you're gonna run to the side of the person who you got that news about praise god i'm going somewhere travel with me right you're gonna run to that person but the word of god said now jesus loved them and when he heard it he delayed he stopped for two days in the place that he was in he tarried for two days in that place it goes against what our logics would tell us that jesus should do jesus should run to their aid praise god skipping all the way down to verse 17 it says that eventually jesus went after the two days and the delay because jesus knew lazarus was going to die right verse 17 when he arrived he found that lazarus has already been in the tomb for four days praise god and a lot of people came out to support mary a lot of people came out to comfort martha praise god and as soon as martha heard that jesus was there verse 21 then martha said to jesus lord if you had been here my brother would not have died yet even now i know that whatever you ask from god god will give it to you praise god so even though martha was upset that jesus never came when she thought he should he never showed up at the time that she believed that jesus should have showed up he never showed up praise god she was upset she was hurt she was broken she had a you should probably had like a million um emotions going through her flowing through her mind when she came to jesus right and she said listen jesus you see if you had come on time if you had come when we called you we know i know that my brother would not have died but even though he is dead i still have some level of expectancy knowing who you are and who you come from Praise God. Great morning, woman of God. Hallelujah. Knowing who you are and who you belong to, I still have a level of expectancy. So even though Lazarus was dead, Martha hadn't completely lost hope in God because she knew who it was that showed up. Glory be to God. And if we skip all the way over, praise God, to um, verse 32, I think verse, yeah, verse 32 mary martha went to call mary right and mary came to where jesus was and she fell at his feet and told him lord if you had been here my brother wouldn't have died how many times have we had situations and instead of it getting better it just got worse and it keeps getting worse and we keep sending messages to god through prayer through fasting Praise God. Through the sowing of seeds. Through whatever it is. Everything. It's like we're desperate. We're at our last point. And instead of the situation to get better, it just got worse. Hallelujah. We go before God and we're like, God, 
if you had only stepped in now if you had only stepped in a day ago a year ago if you had only stepped in when i was calling on you i wouldn't be where i am right now if only you had stepped in praise god and then we keep saying that because it keeps getting worse and worse and we keep saying god if only you have stepped in if you had stepped in when i was calling on you when i sent out these messages to you when i was praying and i went on the 21 days of fasting and the 40 days of fasting and all of these things that we do to get god's attention praise god and it seemed like in the midst of our situation god is far removed hallelujah that he is watching us suffer he's not being moved by it praise god it's like he doesn't connect with him how can jesus say he loved us he loved lazarus yet still he delayed his journey how can god say that he loves us yet still he is not showing up in the time that we're expecting him to show up and our bad situation just got worse how can he say that he loves us praise God hallelujah and so they brought Jesus to the place where Lazarus was laying and the word of God says that Jesus wept hallelujah he cried because he did have compassion he was moved the word of God says that we have a God who is moved by the feelings of our infirmities he's not a God that is sitting far off looking on saying you doing and going through what you're going through without having any remorse or any emotions attached to it praise God the word of God says that Jesus he wept because guess what he loved Lazarus and maybe the reality of Lazarus that when he went to the tomb connected with him and everyone around him was weeping and mourning and he felt their hurt he felt their suffering what am I saying I'm saying whatever it is that you are going through the morning that you've been going through over the past couple of years weeks and months and you feel as if God is not moved by it I want you to know that he is moved by it praise God he is moved by it hallelujah he loves you just the same praise God when that happened the people around them were like well you see what I told you I told you that Jesus loved him look at how he is weeping but then other people will come and they say hey and this is in verse 36 and and 37 and other people come and say well couldn't this God who was healing people, he healed a blind man. Couldn't he have healed this one that he called his friend? Praise God. People are looking in at you. They're looking at you. Sometimes it's even us. We ourselves that are saying this. Hallelujah. That Look at what God did for, 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 for Mary. Look what God did for Martha. Look what God did for Joseph. Look what God did for this one and that one and that one. And look at me who have been so close and so faithful to God and yet he had not come through for me he allowed my situation to get to the state that it is in praise God hallelujah and people around you they look on at you and they mock you and they jeer you and they're like oh look at you who are so faithful to God where is he now why hasn't he come through for you I'm thriving but you are going downwards hallelujah I'm surviving I'm doing this I'm doing that but look at you where is he your God hallelujah sometimes they come and they taunt you the enemy comes and taunt you and say where is your God hallelujah 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 but I just want you to know based on this story hallelujah that God doesn't just want to patch up your situation because sometimes we just want a quick fix we just want it to be patched up right we don't even care about the, the 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 whole everything you know you know how god you know god just likes to be extravagant he just likes to do this big bang <laughs> you know this big amazing thing praise god but you are there saying but god i need you to heal me and god is saying i don't just want to heal you i want to restore you the tiny thing that you are asking me to do because you can just see the here and now that's not what i want to do in your life i want to do bigger and better things praise god but because you only know of god healing 
because that's all they knew that God, that Jesus was capable of doing. They only knew that Jesus was capable of healing the blind man's eye, making the lame to walk. They had no idea the magnitude of what Jesus could have done. And so they could not have anticipated that. So what they did was they called him in to do what they know he could do. But he didn't want to just do that. He wanted to exceed their expectation. Hallelujah. And so he he waited. He waited under the bidding of the Father and he called forth Lazarus. He resurrected Lazarus. He said, listen, God, I know you hear me when I pray and you do what I ask. What I'm asking you is not just for my sake. I'm asking you for these people around me to see and know who you are and what you are capable of doing. Glory be to God. And so we might be here praying. You might be here asking God, beating on heaven door and asking God Lord I need you to address this matter in this way God I need this healing Lord I need this financial breakthrough Lord I need a thousand dollars that's what I need Lord God and God is delayed because he doesn't want to give you a thousand he wants to give you a hundred thousand praise God he doesn't just want to heal you but he wants to restore and repair the organ completely that people said that the doctor told you is useless that you needed to get a replacement for he is saying no i don't want an external replacement i don't want them to take it out and put something new i want to restore it from the inside to give you a brand new heart to give you a brand new of everything hallelujah that's what god was doing god was creating a miracle that was so big that exceeded expectation that had never been heard of and that's what god wants to do in your life life this morning you are expecting him to do what you know he is capable of but what god wants to do is something that you don't even know just yet like we know that god is able to do big things but what god wants to do in your life it has not even entered the thoughts of your mind what god wants to do with you praise god and so it might seem like he is delaying but god is very intentional in the things that he is doing in your your life so what you consider to be a delay what you consider to be a setback hallelujah in what God is doing in your life is pretty much just a set up hallelujah for the miracles that he wants to do in your life for the things that he wants to accomplish and establish in your life people of God that's what God wanted in the story of Lazarus and that is why today and this day 2020 one which is years millennia after jesus what the earth we can still come back and talk about this story hallelujah lazarus who should have been dead at the time that he should have been dead praise god he is now a celebrity being talked about for so many years after god doesn't want your story to end just like that you can just see right now and here but god is looking further into your future Future on the things that he wants to accomplish through you and through your testimony and so when you are here and you are expecting small things God is saying hey just give me a little credit I can do greater things than what you have expecting people of God I want you to remember remember that the word of God says that he doesn't operate on our time and so when Jesus showed up and seemed to be four days late, he was late in the sight of everyone else, but he was perfectly on time in the sight of God. And so the situation that you are faced with that seems as if, oh my God, if God could just show up now, why is God showing up so late? He is not late. A thousand years to us, people of God, is, is like a day to the Lord. He's not late. He's never late. When he shows up, he shows up in the right time. And he's showing up with a miracle. He is showing up with your breakthrough. And it's going to exceed anything that you could ever imagine. Now let me ask you, and this, 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 this popped into my head. Praise God. Have you ever had a situation where maybe you loan someone some money? Right? You loan them some money. It was a sacrifice for you to give it to them. Because at the time you needed money as well. 
but because of who this person is you say okay let me squeeze you a little here because i know that you probably need it more than me and they say okay i'm gonna give this money back to you next week and you have needs right and you're waiting for this money next week next week comes the money doesn't show up the following week and the following week and the following week and the money doesn't come it seems as if the money is not coming back this person has failed they have not returned this money and so you take your mind off it you start to find other ways to do you know whatever it is that you need to do to take care of your needs and your bills and whatever because this is not coming forth praise god but then you end up in a worse off situation financially like i know i can talk financially with us because we have all had those experiences where financially you are in a place that's worse off than the place you were when you loaned that money and you cannot figure out how exactly this is gonna come true for you what is gonna work out in on my behalf and you pray and you ask god and you say lord i need a miracle lord i need something to work out in my favor but in your seeking god for the something to work out in your favor you would never dream and imagine in a thousand years that it would be that person that owed you several months or even years ago hallelujah but god just prick that person's heart and they give you a call and say hey you remember the time i borrowed x amount of money from you here it is and it was the exact amount of money that you needed for your situation yes we cause we complain we murmur and we probably you probably even cut off the person but God was just withholding that because he knew there was gonna come a time where you needed that money and if that person had returned the money when you thought you needed it you would not have had it in this situation what am I saying? What's, what's the point of this that I just shared? What I'm saying is we don't understand how God operates. We don't understand his timing. His timing is not for us to understand. His word says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He may not come when we want him, when we expect him to. He doesn't show up at that time. Praise God. Because when he shows up, he shows up with a bang. When he shows up, he shows off. And maybe the place that we are right now, it's not in alignment with the plans that God has for us. And so people of God, when we're praying about our situations, when we're praying about God showing up in our lives, we have to be careful to pray according to his will. Why is the situation not working out in your favor? Why is it not working out the way that you anticipated that it would? That is because it is not working out based on your plans. It is working out based on God's plan for you. The plan for Mary and Martha would have been for Jesus to heal Lazarus. But God's plan for Lazarus was that Lazarus would be restored and resurrected. Hallelujah. It's bigger than what they had. The impact of his move in your life, in his timing, is greater than the impact it would have if he came on your timing. So whatever it is that we have been seeking for, whatever breakthrough that you need in your life, whether it's health, whether it's emotional, physical, mental, whether it's financial, it doesn't matter what level you are expecting God to come through for you at. And it might seem as if he's not coming through. It might seem as if, oh wait, God has forgotten me. He has not forgotten you. I don't think he could even if he tried. Praise God. Nothing that you did will cause God to forget you. Just know that he is waiting on his timing. His perfect timing. And when he comes through for you. Listen. I, have you ever had any situation at all that seemed dead and hopeless? Like God wasn't going to come through for you? And when he finally came through, you have to sit down and you have to be like, wow. It blows your mind. 
It exceeded your wildest expectation, your wildest dreams. When God came through for you, you're like, well, that's better than what I had in mind, right? <laughs> you're like, wow, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. That's better than what I expected. So yeah, by all means, Lord, do your thing. Have your way because I could not have anticipated that. Don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. Don't fall into the habit of murmuring and complaining. I'm talking here from experience. Where we look, we look, and, and, and we're, we're like, we start to think like Job's wife that say, hey, curse God. You know, some, 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 sometimes, and maybe you've had people like this who have totally lost their faith. They have totally walked away from God because of the situation that they're in and it didn't seem like god was coming through and so they took matters into their own hands let don't let that be you woman of god man of god do not let that be you trust in god he's always on time he may not come as the song said he may not come when you want him but he will be there right on time God's timing is perfect and when he shows up there is no way we can deny that God showed up there is no way that we can deny that it was his doing praise God hallelujah that's the word of God for us this morning he is always on time and you know, we are in different seasons of our lives. For some of us, we have just started our waiting period. While for others, he is ready to show up. For others, he is right there. And he's ready to work that miracle in your life. Because you've waited. You've waited long enough. And it's your season. But just remember, he is always on time. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the reminder. We thank you for the hope. Lord, we were losing heart. We were losing hope. Mighty God, because it seemed as if we were neglected. It seemed as if, mighty God, you didn't care. Hallelujah. But God, we have been reminded this morning that your timing for us is perfect. That even though it seems as if you are you're not late even though it seems mighty god that you are not showing up that you have forgotten us lord that you are still coming through and when you do it will be the perfect timing beyond what we would have imagined beyond what we would have expected and so father we pray this morning that we will leave this platform encouraged mighty god we pray lord god that you will forgive us for all the times that we have murmured, for all the times that we have complained, for all the times that we have sought to execute plan B to, to Z. Lord God, for all the times, God, that we have compromised our faith and compromised ourselves just to, Lord God, find our own solution to our situation, God. Help us, Lord, restore our faith in you, restore our trust in you lord to know that lord you have a track record of showing up on time for others you are not an impartial god it means that you are not a respecter of person and you didn't love them more than you love us which means god that you will also show up for us god i pray that we will trust you enough to believe that this morning and that god we will wait on your timing because your timing is perfect for us. Lord, thank you even now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, people of God. Thank you so much for tuning in to the plug this morning where we are pursuing life under God. Continue to share, continue to like and to tag persons in these broadcasts so that they too can be blessed. You know you are blessed to be a blessing. Praise God.